if you could pick like of the three kind of main patterns that a deer has, like his bedding pattern, his feeding pattern, bedding movement, feeding movement, um, and his breeding movement, like you know every year like what a buck kind of does in the rut, right? Mm -hmm. You know at certain times of year where he's going to be feeding. You know where he's going to be bedding. If you if you had to pick like the most important that you're wanting to know, obviously you want to know all of them, or at least bedding and feeding. Yeah, that'd be great, yeah. <laughs> but if we don't, like, what what do you think is the most important to capitalize on a deer? Like, say he's not even feeding on you, but he's bedding on you, or he's bedding somewhere else, but he's feeding on you. Like, to you, what's the most important? Uh, bedding, hands down. I, I personally think the bedding is the most important. I mean. You can kill a buck on him. If he's coming to your food source, and you can hop in there and even post, I mean, you can kill him easily. But um, as far as just like an overall standpoint, something I would like to know right off the bat. If I, I mean, it may sound weird, but it, I personally believe, if you know where a deer's bedding and you know where he's eating, that deer should be dead. Like, I, I, that's just, it's kind of how I look at it, you know? So if, in bedding areas to me are, are kind of like a, a a, a really cool deal, especially when it is like an established bedding area, because if you got that, you know, that's that area for a reason, and you, and you learn to manipulate that spot, and there's plenty of deer that I, I've i killed that I don't even, I don't know where they were bedding. If I knew where they were bedding, I would have killed them a lot earlier. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those, I saw hands down, I think the bedding, bedding is the, I think that's one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. How how often do you think the deer bed consistently like that? Do you think uh, it's it, like... It's not, it, it is not all the time, I know that. I mean, that's a... What do you think that a deer will use a bed for a while, like a certain time of the year, a certain part of the rut? Like, yeah, I mean, uh, the buck I shot a couple years ago, Mr. Clean with the big drop time. He, um, the reason I was able to get on him late season and 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 get him down was I found where he was bedding, and where he was bedding had was nowhere near where he bedded throughout the season. But the weather got really cold. He moved closer to a food source. He established that little spot with his uh, his group of does and. That's where he was. He was held up there. So, yeah, that I think that definitely changes. And so, how did you figure that out? Scouting. You just you got you got to be looking. You have to scouting. Okay. You have to stay be specific. Current. What did you do? Like, talk about the day that you have kind of figured that out, right? Okay. So, what were you doing? Well, like, were I you noticed just walking. I noticed an abundance. Well, yeah, you I was scouting a lot of different things. Like, oh, I was uh, running cameras. I was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean? When when I when I when I say scouting, I mean literally, uh, you know, pounding ground, pounding ground, just seeing what's going on. You know, getting a first hand, you know, uh, visual, you know, of sign in the woods. So, I mean, the night before, I noticed, and you start to notice these things, areas that get hit better in different types of years. But, um, you know, this we leave food plots up late you know for that reason when it gets frigidly cold i mean this was january it was very cold you know there was a a big influx of these deer that were hitting this particular food plot you know i mean good tracks in the snow uh, i mean just you know pounded trails so well when it's i mean scouting the snow is cakewalk i mean you know you can everything's like glowing so i mean i just kind of looked at a couple ridges where i thought they'd be holding up and they were and i moved in and i, I killed them I knew he was coming from that ridge. And I knew where he was going to feed. So, if you if you could figure those things out, was there some kind of pinch there? I mean, was there a trail you saw? Like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, well, I, I knew where the trails were going. Um, I knew where he was bedding. I got as close as I possibly could to the transition where my wind was good and they wouldn't bust me in the food and they wouldn't bust me in the bed and I can get in there safely. And then, and and that was it. I mean, I personally feel that the biggest thing. And it took me years, like, the biggest thing I think people get hung up on is manipulating the area properly. Like, some people just, especially bedding areas, like, getting in there and actually um, finding, there's some guys who end up finding that, that honey hole. And they find that established bedding area and it's, you know, just okay. reeks of a mature deer and it's just, he's there. And, they, just and, they, mess it all and they screw it up because they can't they don't do it properly they don't set up properly they don't access it properly or, or what it may be so um i mean that just and i think that just comes with doing it but being able to really analyze the situation and, and read the sign and see what's what's going on there where where's he coming from how's he accessing this bedding area where, where do you think he's going so mm -hmm. um i might have got off on a little tangent there but yeah bedding for sure 